silence? Do you have a, a note or a letter that says we're I doing do. a moment of silence? I, you are so on top of it. I, okay. I like all of Tina Marie's suggestions. And you, over, may now, you may now begin. And, and overthought about them. <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> okay. Oh, woman. And I even wrote this out so I didn't mess it up again. So um, I'm going to move this over here, though, so it doesn't look like I'm looking at the ground. So first of all, I want to thank everyone um, for coming. Um, thank you for each and every one of you for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, with all the hurt and the pain in the world going on right now, it's imperative that we take some time for hope and healing. Uh, tonight, myself and other leaders in the spiritual community would like to spread some love, light, and opportunity for change. 2020 is often referred to as perfect vision. For so long now, our vision has been clouded. We often see clearly up close in our immediate surroundings, but as we start to scan outside of our circle, our vision becomes more and more unclear. The year 2020 is a miraculous time, even though it's been filled with confusion, pain, hurt, um, and trauma in many ways. As our vision improves, and becomes more clear, we begin to see all the, not only the beauty around us, but also all the ugly around us as well. Um, this is a time of awakening, a time for us as humans to see the problems in our world and work together in love to fix these problems. It's our time as light workers to help and heal and comfort our brothers and sisters who are hurting. It's a time for us to lead by example. I'm gonna cry into this. <laughs> to stand if you up. You don't, I already am. Okay. <laughs> to stand up for our prejudices, <sighs> our prejudices and to open our eyes fully. There is no virus that hope and love cannot cure. There is no pain that hope and love cannot soothe. Now is the time for us to come together as one, regardless of our religions, our beliefs, our politics, our color. We are all brothers and sisters sharing the same home here on earth. So tonight we gather together to spread our hope. Let us all light a candle, if you have one, in honor of those who have been lost this year due to the coronavirus, police brutality, senseless murders, and any other tragedy that we've come across this year, which has been a lot, or that we're going to come across in the next six months. Um, pray to who, whomever it is you choose to pray, for peace, pray for true systematic reform, pray for unconditional love. Um, at this time, I would like to ask everyone who has one handy to light a candle in honor of tonight's ceremony. If you do not have one, that's okay. I'm gonna light mine here so you guys can see it, maybe. Oh yeah. Over here. And then we'll now take a minute of silence to pray and honor those who have been lost. One second to get to the screen. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Bernice whenever she's ready. That was beautiful. Thank you for that moment of silence and quiet reflection. <sighs> Hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here as we hold sacred space collectively and we bring healing and light in this vigil. Everything is connected. We are all connected. Connection between 
Everything that happens is felt by all, each and every one of us. As we bring awareness to those feelings, there's energy behind that. Dense energy, heavy emotions, and those feelings need to be transmuted. Those thought forms are present in our collective and create an imbalance. To transmute the energy, we come together in ceremony today. As we hold space for healing, part of healing is grieving. I'd like to share a sacred way to grieve together and to transmute these tragedies that are occurring. Together as we grieve, we make space for healing. So let's take one hand to our heart space and one hand to our solar plexus. And breathe here for a moment. And as we're here, let's drop into the essential truth of love and gratitude. Let's feel the love and light emanating from our heart space in our seat of power. The energy behind our emotions, may it be transmuted to love and light. May the light of our candles fire bring healing. And if you all would like to sing with me. These words are few, but they are powerful. And they go as follow. Fire, fire, rising higher, fire, fire, healing me. Fire, fire, rising higher, fire, fire, healing me. Fire, fire, rising higher, fire, fire, healing me. Participating and for bringing light to healing. You can turn to the ceremony and practice whenever you feel the need to transmute feelings. Thank you. Thank you, Bernice. Yes, thank you. That was awesome. And next up, we've got wherever he is, Scotty. <laughs> so the one thing that that I think is missing in this time of that we're all in right now is is honest, honest and open conversation between us all we've been talking about this for a while i think for too long we've allowed we've allowed our words to be not heard we've not allowed our thoughts not to be heard we've allowed um discrimination we've allowed hate we've allowed dishonor not to be heard and i think that this is the time where we need to have open and honest conversations, not to say that everybody in the world is going to think the same, not to say that everybody has the same beliefs, but it's time for us to discuss those in a way that, that is appropriate and honest and, and, and allow our feelings and our understandings to be known. And uh, that all comes from a place of love. And to me, I've been talking about love for the last few years and I posted on my page a lot and and everybody always wonders why I'm always talking about love. Well, love to me is 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 what it's all about. It's what we, our spirits are after we leave this plane, when we go to the other side, whatever you call the other side, and when we pass. That's a place of love. That's a place of honor. That's a place of respect. And we go there and and, and we love. And so why can't and why aren't we that now? Well, we spend too much time in our in our hatred and too much time in our trying to be better than others our trying to have more than others us trying to have things that we don't really need you know and putting expectations on others that we wouldn't even put expectations on us 
And to me, that is the saddest time right now is because we're truly not loving that person for letting them have the experiences in life that they need to have to make themselves happy. So the love for us, I mean, there's really only two things in this world that make everybody not right. It's our expectations of others and ours, because either they did something we didn't want them to do, or they didn't do something we wanted them to do. Those are your two major points in life is those two things. And that if you take those away and you, you truly have no expectations of others, you truly just love the person for who they are unconditionally and allow them the space that they need, allow them the love that they need, you know, and award them, you know, things in life that make them feel the best. Um, a lot of this would go away. A lot of this would not be here right now if we were just the beings of love. So as spiritual leaders in this room, as spiritual people watching this, you know, in, in replay, we ask that you please just love people, love yourself, love the best in, in you, and then love the best in others. And then honor them for being the people that they are and the souls that they are and allow them to express themselves in the way they really need to express. And I'll leave that with love and blessing. Love you all. In fact, you probably expect me to talk for an hour. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you. Thank you. And I said, group hug. <laughs> Um, so at this time, I had it um, down for just kind of a general discussion. If anybody had any questions or any concerns or anything they wanted to share about, um, you know, everything going on right now. I mean, of course, we've had the coronavirus and then that suddenly disappeared, as you hear people say, which obviously it did not. It's still going strong, but, you know, our attention got kind of shifted to the horrific video that rocked the world, um, you know, with George Floyd. Um, you know, so, I mean, anything that anybody wants to discuss or wants to say about it's this? Also, it's also Pride Month. It is also yes. Pride Month, yes. There's you can't see it. I've got my, my <laughs> Love is Love shirt on. Oh. Yeah. There's a whole another community out there that, yes. that, has been, that has been dishonored, you know. Yes. But not, you know, everybody's been dishonored, you know, the blacks and the gays yeah. and, and LGBTQ yeah. all need our love too because Pretty they are much, you know, themselves, we, trying to be themselves. Yeah. You know, we, we hear, you we hear mostly about, you're, you're hearing more about the LGBT now. Of course, you're hearing all about the black, but I mean, really any minority in the United States have went through this at some point, you know, and it's, and, if, and by minority, it's not even just race. It's if you're a fat person, you know, you're treated different. I'm saying as a fat person, <laughs> if you're a paranormal person, you know, people judge you, you know, unfairly. If, you know, if you're a psychic, people judge you unfairly. If you have any kind of difference whatsoever, so many people, you know, tend to judge us unfairly. And I think now, I think it's always been there. I just think now it's more prominent because people are recording it. People are putting it on social media. People are seeing it. So finally, these people who have had these experiences are getting that opportunity to say, look, this is what I've been talking about for 50 years. Mm -hmm. This is what you do to me. Um, you know, and I've told most of the people that are in here on, on live right now, we're in the Psychic Unite group. So you've heard You've heard me yap about it before, um, how, you know, if you would have asked me eight years ago, I would have said, there is no such thing as white privilege. There is no such, you know, there, there, is, there is racism, but it's only in extreme cases. And there, you know, there, I would have told you everything that, like, you know, I just even really existed until five years ago when I got into an interracial relationship and I had a daughter who, came out, um, you know, on the spectrum, yeah, well, not only the, the autism spectrum, which is another place that people get the judgment, um, but also on the, the LGBT spectrum, um, you know, and all of a sudden it was like, wow, okay, you know, I, I get it that I didn't, I hadn't learned these lessons yet, um, 
I would have liked a little bit of slower transition into it, but no, the universe said, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Not to say, it's like the universe ball. on the back of your head. Bam. Yep, yep, here's a brick ball. Eyes now, wide now. <laughs> yep, now everybody around you, everybody you love is either racist, homophobic, or they are a minority, or they are LGBT. So mm -hmm. they're either here or here. <laughs> yeah. You have a select few that are pretty cool. But then you have these two spectrums, and it's like, wow, when did this happen? Like, people that <laughs> never, would have, never would have expected. You know, I'm like, that person, I've known this person for 35, 40 years. How, when did they become racist? You know, when did they become, you know, they've always have been, we just didn't notice. And, you know, it was more, I guess, out of sight, out of mind. And I think that's the way it has been for a lot of people. And I think that's why this video has been so different is it wasn't out of sight any, or out of mind anymore. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a quick spur of the moment shooting that you could say, well, they were scared or maybe there is something off camera or something said that you didn't hear or it was eight minutes of pure hell and torture. And it was, it was hard enough to watch, not even imagine going through it. But I think that this time the video truly showed everybody, no matter who they are, that this does exist. This does happen. You can't push this to the side. There is no, no even remotely close reason to justify it. You can't make, no matter how hard you try, some kind of excuse. Now people try, you always hear that. He had drugs in his system. So most of us do. Maybe not illegal drugs, but you know, that, that's no excuse. When you take somebody's pulse and it's not there and you wait three more minutes on their neck without flipping them over, without helping them, it doesn't matter if they have drugs in their system. It doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter if he just went in there and shot 10 people and now you're holding them down. You still don't have a right to take somebody's life. Right. You know, he would have had a right either, they, but. I think some of the biggest things that we've taken for granted through life is, is that, that these prejudices have been there, mm -hmm. not based on people's, you know, we look at people differently. We look at each person um, in a way where we're judging them. And then we, and other people we don't know, you know, like there are so many people that I know and you guys all know that are LGBTQ that aren't out, that you don't know that they haven't been persecuted. Right. You don't know that they have. And you look at that person and you go, oh, I would have never thought he was. You know, you never, you know, you understand that. And so you look at these people and go, okay, this person's been that his whole life, you know, but you look at it and, and you put your automatic, your, your shades on or your, your glasses of view and not understanding what that person really is. And it's not like they want to be out in the public with it because it's not important. It's important to them, but it's not important to the world. You know what I mean? So there's this, this phase that, that people don't use it for their own, for their own, you know, means, you know, a lot of times on Facebook, you know, people put things out, Oh, you posted that because you, you want to be known. No, that's not the reason. You know, there's a lot of this that we put on. And as you said, Becky, that's what changed this time. Was right. here, here's, here's, a, here's a man that at best, at best had a fake $20. You don't even know if it was his. You don't know where he got it because I work in retail. I see fake $20 and I don't know where it came from. Silcon did. Yep. We, just we had know. somebody give us a 50 for raffle tickets once. And we took it to the bank. And they're like, this is fake. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, you just don't know. And, and But we put our glasses on, you know, one way or we put our glasses on the other way and we see somebody because of their skin, some people because of their race, some people because of their, their sex, or some people based on on our our preconceived notions of, of what this race or this sex or this person should be. And we don't look at it for the individual or for the human that that person is. And I think this time it finally showed us that we have to look at everybody for ourselves. And I know that I had the vision before this all came 
back in November that something major was going to happen. And I didn't realize until a couple of days ago that this is what I was talking about, not the coronavirus. That this is what I was talking about, how the world's going to be different. And this is what it, the world, what spirit was telling me that we're all going to start becoming one. That this is what it was. And this all of a sudden showed up out of nowhere. And like I said, I didn't realize it. You know, this was my vision months ago. And they said, we're not ready for it. This is why, and I think that's why the coronavirus came, was to slow the world down so this would happen. And then now we can change as a whole community and as a whole world into a more loving place and, and put the right laws in place that every individual is an individual no matter what. Right. No well, matter. The coronavirus too brought out a lot of those, those cracks in the system. Yes. You know, they're figuring out now the discrepancy in healthcare the discrepancy, right. you know, we're figuring out all that too. So it kind of really has a lot to do with, you know, the police brutality, the racism, you know, because we're realizing like why in a community that has 10% minorities are 40% of the people dying with it, a minority. Right. And we're realizing it's because of the discrepancy in healthcare, the, the insurance, the lack of, you know, ability where you know a lot of us just take for I take for granted my medical insurance all the time you know it doesn't until somebody says you know well, I'm just like well why don't you go to the doctor and I'm like because it's three hundred dollars if I go to the doctor I was like oh well that's true I guess it is for me too but the insurance pays it and I don't even think about it you know but it's an out of sight out of mind thing but I think coronavirus really did that you know yes statistically it may be similar to the flu but we don't pay attention to the flu anymore. Not really. You know, we just kind of like, you know, get our flu shot or don't get our flu shot, whatever. If we get it, we, we don't pay it. any attention to it because it just is. We lost over 50,000 people in the United right. States this year to flu. Right. And we just pay attention to it's those. It's been around so long that we're, I mean, I'm not saying that it's the same, but you know what I mean? It's, right. it's, it's still 50,000 people lost their lives this year because right. of the virus. Right. No, it's just, it's less than whatever that, Corona hit. Yeah, they always say herd immunity as far as immunity to the virus, but really it's immunity to the even acknowledgement that the virus even exists. Correct. We don't think twice about it. And, you know, I think that's where the coronavirus came in, slapped us upside the head. And it's like, oh crap, you know, this is happening. Look at all these people dying. Look at these people, you know, and a lot of people are like, this doesn't affect people I know. Well, it, it does. You know, my my ex step my ex mother in law just died from it. Um, the other day, she was in a there's a nursing home here in town that had eight, has eighty five cases associated with the nursing home between staff and residents. They had another one die today, um, which is I think they're up to twelve now of nursing home residents who have died from that home. And this is an area of a hundred thousand people in the entire county. Right. You know, and we've had 120 some deaths just in just in the city. <laughs> you know? So I, I just think that that's a lot. Yeah, it's just all been, you know, this very eye opening, you know, and also showing us the cracks in the system as far as cracks with our government, cracks with, you know, e even our, you know, our workplaces, our work lives, our home lives, states. It's yeah. not just the government, it's states. It's, yeah, yeah, you know, no, government's on every level. I mean, even down yeah. the city. Yeah. I mean, every little process that's supposed to happen up the scale, you know, you'll lose, you lose some, you know, you'll lose some of that. It's like, oh, wow, this should have happened and this should have went to here and then it should have went to here, but it never happened. Right. So, but, yeah. Going back to what Scotty said, um, he, you know, you kept referring to how we look at people, how we see people. And one of the things that I observed with wearing of the mask is watching people. It brought us all to start looking at each other in the eyes. You know, before there was never eye contact. And yeah. with the mask, it's like you have no choice but to look at the person in the eyes. And, yeah. and you know, we all know that the eyes are the windows of our soul. Mm -hmm. And so you can see the hurt and the pain in another person's eyes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why we've always avoided it all those years because we didn't wanna look at somebody and see their pain and see their hurt. 
can't because then we might have to be responsible. You know, we might have to think, I got to care about this person. You know, someone, I'm a caring person. So for me, it's like, like today I was at the grocery store and uh, there was a, a black man in the grocery store and our eyes met. And I just, everything inside of me just wanted to go up and hug him just because it's like, I just hurt for everything that's gone on, the impact of me, you know. But I, I love the fact, I, I try to find the good that's coming out of this because the, the bad is, is just huge and we, we're all aware of it, you know, and it, it is what it is. And I accept that and I work with that. But the good is we're forced to really look at another person, look in those beautiful eyes of another person, see their soul, see their hurt. Yeah. And I think as spiritual leaders, that's so important because it, it lets us know we need to keep lighting candles. We got to keep sending healing. We got to care about others, you know, because you, you yeah. just, we don't know what goes on behind these pretty eyes that we look at others. Yeah, and so many times we don't make eye contact because then we're afraid they're going to talk to us. Yeah. Or we're going to have to have a conversation. That responsibility again. Yeah, how many times have you been at Walmart or something, you're trying to hurry and you see that person that you went to school with and you know, you just know they're going to talk your ear off. So you're like trying to look at the shelf as you walk by to not make that eye contact because if you do, they're going to be like, hi. You're like, oh. (laughs) Right. Right. It's really taking that time now to where you're like, okay. It is. We're, we're starting to be more human. We're, mm-hmm. we're instead of ignoring the human race, we're paying attention to the human race. And that's exactly what we need to do. So that's a, that's a good lesson that's come out Definitely. of this. Definitely. You know, the other big thing is, is, you know, we see on, on all the posts that, that all lives matter. And in essence, they do, but they don't, they don't matter until all lives truly matter. Right. Because the African American race right now does not matter. You know, the gays and lesbians do not matter. Right. You know, until we get everybody to matter, then we have no, you know, then all lives can matter. But until we, right. we get to that point, we get to that knowledge, we get to that talking, you know, that's, that's the most important thing. It's in, and that's what I think is has to happen now, is we have to have these honest discussions like we're having here tonight, knowing that the majority of us, you know, don't want this, you know, and, the, and there are the people that want this, and there are the people that riots, and it have nothing to do with this, you know. It's it's all, there's bad in everything, you know. Not all cops are bad, you know. Right. I mean, we all know many that are really good friends of ours. Yeah. And, and they're the most amazing people I know, most caring and most spiritual people and they're cops, you know, so we can't say that everybody is, you know, maybe the way they, they have to perform their duties is because, but that's not them. They're here just to perform what they're told to do. You know, just like our constitution, you have to live within it. If you do things outside of it, then that's what you get held accountable for. And that's, you know, and unfortunately, police officers have to, you know, there's some archaic laws and archaic, you know, things that we do that has to change. And once we're, once we become that, that person of change, a person of understanding, but we have to narrow it down. We have to really decide where, where it has to happen, what has to change. You can't say everything changes today and it just can't, you know, so what is the first step? Well, the first step is let's talk about it. Let's find a common ground. Let's get rid of the stuff that truly is is our you know archaic, mm-hmm. yeah, and start changing that. I think another wake up call is um, the three police officers that just stood by and did nothing. Right. You know how many people are you know we may not be the ones that are aggressive, but how many don't do anything? Right. And that's, that speaks power that, you know, that's like, and, and we're starting to, things are starting to change now because they are going to do something with those three. And that's, that is good. We want to hear that. We need to hear that. And that sends a message out. Like you have to be, you have to get involved. You have to start being responsible. You have to start being a a caring human being. That's why we're here. Right. I think so too. It's not self oftentimes our systems disempower us yes. and and i think 
you know, I was like, why, you know, you know, a black person can't, can't get involved with that and say, stop. Well, why couldn't a white person go in? They're like, yeah, if a white person tried to tell a cop to stop what they're doing, they get arrested. And one did. There was one That's girl. That's a problem. There yeah. was one girl and the, the one guy kept pushing her away. But yeah. she kept saying, well, and see, stop, take his pulse. Can you see he can't breathe? Right. And, you know, those cops that just stood there, mm -hmm. they were not empowered by the system to speak up and speak out. Right. That is, they, if they had been empowered, they would have acted. So many of us don't act because we're disempowered. Right. You know, it's like, I, I get so frustrated with government, but what's more frustrating is there's literally nothing I can do to cause right. change. Yeah, I'm sure, I can write letters to senators. Like, that's going to do anything. It's not. It's like, I why should I waste my time? million dollars behind it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like we are totally disempowered and that's not okay. So, yeah, I mean, and the other problem is um, in my county, we have some incredible programs for our law enforcement on how to work with people with autism and people with mental illnesses because so many times people who are suicidal get killed when the police have to be involved. Yeah. And so we now have a program that the the police go through to help curb that and i'll tell you the, the many times there was a year when things were not going well at home and we had many midnight visits from the sheriff's office and every time it was they were so kind and gentle and considerate and i'm like yeah but you know you think about too it's like how jaded police get because they have learned the hard way not to trust people because they've learned people lie. And so you, there's that balance. And how do we deal with the jadedness that comes from doing that kind of a job? It's, it's a part of it because they're dealing with people who are doing naughty things all the time. Mm -hmm. And so what can we do to help them? Do we give them like a hiatus? Do we rotate them out and have them do like a peacekeeping mission for a month just to start seeing good in people again and remembering oh yeah not everybody is a criminal yeah but i mean what, the same you know, thing what, is we're putting too many people in jail i mean i think that's one of absolutely. the absolutely you know and, and, absolutely and we're putting them in for reasons of marijuana give me a break you know what i mean right you know right. you're putting, how um, many how many of the African Americans are it. in jail because of marijuana? You know, why? Right. Why are we breaking up their a, families? A lot of why are we breaking up their lives. Why are we breaking up, you know, with little kids not having dads in their Which houses because they're out for marijuana? Give me a break. Generations of people not trusting each other. Not trusting the job, not trusting, you know. And that's what and that's what I was saying. I think it's the laws. I think it's the laws that we have. Yes, to absolutely. I think it's. I think it's. It's, it's pro most likely a combination of things. Um, and mm -hmm. yes, do, laws do need to be looked at. Also, protocols need to be looked at on how we're going to enforce those laws, and how are we going to empower cops to speak up against? Because you know, it, it's kind of like Other the military. You don't. You don't speak up against your partner. Because that person's got your back when you're in a life and death situation. Right. But I know that my partner's doing something wrong. What do I do? Those are real problems. Right. Um, yeah. But the other thing is, you know, how it's been heartbreaking for me to see men who are in a psych ward having to clean up from drugs and are going back to jail as soon as they're cleaned up. And they're like, we don't want to go back to jail. And then I find out their stories. One of the kids who was going back to jail was a sex slave for six years. I'm like, well, that's an excellent way to uh, deal with that. Of course he's on drugs. Hello? Because he's not getting the appropriate treatment for what happened to him. So for me, I'm seeing this huge disparity in mental health treatment. People, doctors are treating for depression and anxiety when what's really behind it is trauma. And nobody will talk about it. Nobody will work with it. It's like, oh, what? You know, it, it, and women. Well, the good thing is everybody in this group right now will work with it. Yeah. 
but you know how but we're how, not licensed therapists but we're spiritual yeah. therapists and we will all help yeah yeah and it, it needs to the other thing is how about women you know my my daughter's like things come up when she's reading something or watching something i'm like yeah women have been treated like property for a very long time and you know I, when we're talking about what are the statistics of how many girls by the time they reach 18 will have been molested we have a culture where it's okay for men to treat women like garbage it's okay and then the few that aren't are like well i'll never forget some guy i was working in a, a organization of construction people and the ladies were complaining about one of the members of the board who was acting like what i thought was typical male behavior i'm like oh that's normal and they're like no laura that's not normal for a man to behave i'm like well that's normal where i come from it, it, <laughs> uh, so i mean yeah it, we're all seeing each other as others and very I don't know. It just, it can get really frustrating. That was the other thing, actually. Katia was like, a, a boy was um, on the road uh, putting up a sign, and I was like, wow, good for him. Good for him to being, that was what he was moved to do, and he did it in this hot sun. But we were talking about it. It's like, Mom, I'm being told that if I don't go out and protest, I don't care, and I'm a part of the problem. But she told me that time when she was at a Psychic Unite meeting and Scotty had us um, like get this light spinning around the circle of all of us and then have it go up and, and cover Madison, she felt the power of that. And she said, Mom, this is how I'm choosing to act. I choose to do this by aligning with love and spreading and putting that out to help, you know, kind of diffuse this. I'm like, yeah, honey, that's not doing nothing. That's okay. actually probably the most powerful thing someone can do. Mm -hmm. And it's wow. like we have to empower our kids to to follow their hearts and know that what they're doing, if it's from a, a, a yeah. solid place, that that really is doing something. Great, that's good. Yeah. But you know, the biggest thing is is when we look at this is is too often in the society that we've become is we want the gratification or saying on our Facebook, hey, look, we're doing something about this when you really don't have to have that. You just need to be able to be loving. You need to just to talk with the person that's near you, you know, and then when time comes and we need to vote, we need to vote the right people into help us and the right laws we need to get in place. So, you know, we have to work together because without that change or without, you know, the pressure of the change, you know, but too many people put stuff out just to say, Hey, look, I'm protesting, but, ne but their life never changed. They didn't really do anything. They never, right. they didn't, they don't believe it with their heart. They're just doing it with their Facebook just to mm -hmm. not be pressured or not be into it where it's like, but you did nothing. You don't know anybody with it. You've not helped anyone. Right. And no. true, there are those people out there, and there, I see a lot of people. And I have, I actually have friends who you just described them to a T. But you know who those people are deep down. You you know who they are. Be the person in their life so that they can see what needs to change. Correct. Get in their path get into their life in a way that helps them to see that their current, whatever they're doing in their lives, it's just not the right thing. Right. Sometimes you can't be uh, the big person up on the stage with uh, a microphone and, and saying all the words that everybody needs or wants to hear. Sometimes you're the quiet person who walks over and just gives somebody who's having the worst day of their lives a hug. Right. Sometimes you're the shoulder they cry on, and sometimes that makes the change in their life. So right here, we have people that are leaders in, in a way that other people wouldn't see us as leaders, but we are. Uh, quiet leaders making a change. So 
I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. I found people who understand and see things the way I do. So I'm very happy and glad to have all of you in my life. We're happy to have you. <laughs> you created half of us. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> two. Two, yeah. two I, I worked with. Well, I helped you find people, a path. That's all. <laughs> if we count you, then that's half because there's six right now in the screen. So. <laughs> True, I had to find my own path. I have to give credit to Michelle and Scotty because they helped create me too. So yep. I yep. wouldn't be here without any of you guys. And the couple that were here before were down my tree. So I love everybody. So, but I love you all. And, and, and you've all taught me and hopefully that I've taught you guys too, because it's just oh yeah part of our existence together as, as friends and, and, you know, and, and just loving each other the way we do and, and and but that's the way we have to move forward and that's the way we have to work with others we have to give those hugs and we have to be the ones of the light mm -hmm. we can't be the ones of the hate we can't be yeah. throwing stuff on facebook um disbanding friendships because they voted different than you you know or or they have different thoughts or they don't like big macs or you know <laughs> I didn't say I didn't oh, like them. Uh, I don't, don't eat them. The last <laughs> few weeks have really pushed us That's to That's an our inside path. joke. Sorry. It's an inside joke of a Psychics Unite meeting with Tina Marie. The last, the last few weeks have really pushed that to the, to the edge. Thank goodness really? for that unfollow button. Yeah. Snooze somebody for 30 days. For 30 days. It's just the a shame though. But, and not but then I, I look at them and I say to them, how can I help or how can I give them love how can the universe can come and help them how can spirit come and help them to understand that that their life is more than this hate that they're spewing on their page today or this this thought that they have that not everybody is is equal and you know and and this person is doing it for this and you know, it's like it's like i have to send love to them i have to give them the love too the unconditional love that they will then in time feel that and maybe change and understand that th that life is more than what we have right now so okay. the be of be of love and be of change is really what it's all about yeah, yeah. i agree with that i yeah. do too michelle do you want to do, do my part do your <laughs> part now okay um i asked spirit to uh some type of understanding that i could share with other people and um, as a medium at the beginning of the year, I did not see the veil. In January, it's like all of a sudden there's no veil. And I've always seen that veil. And I kept asking spirit, you know, what's that about? Where's the veil? Where's the veil? Well, long story short, I feel like the veil is protection has been lifted. And that's why we have seen so much chaos, so much violence. Um, one of the cards that I drew for January, that would be for the year 2020. I'm going to hold it up here. I hope you guys can see it. It's called Stand Still. And this told me that this is going to be a standstill year, a year where we are, you know, going to have to slow down. And we've absolutely had to do that. And I've had to do a lot of searching with this. I've had to work with this, you know, because when, when you see no veil it's just been really interesting because so much is crossing back and forth and this is really a spiritual rebooting this is a spiritual reset that we're all going through and we were made for such a time as this you know you and i and everyone out there we're really equipped with everything we need and we don't have to fear and i feel like fear is the root of so much that we're seeing and we don't have to fear. We do not have to be dismayed. That's why we are here. We're here for such a time as this. And um, Spirit was showing me, you know, Earth is the classroom. And it's we have been having these lessons, you know. Um, I've learned from all of you. I've learned from others. And, and we've been having all these lessons. And now it's time for our final exam. And so when the final exam happens, the teacher can't answer our questions. So it's, it's time to see how much you learned. You know, you've got all this input. You've got all these lessons. You came to earth with all of this stuff. Now, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? So we are having the biggest final exam right now. And 
many of us are passing, many of us are shining, many of us are stuck in fear. But the thing is, we all got to just keep reaching out. Just keep reaching out, keep looking at each other, keep hugging each other, keep giving each other hope. And that's what I want to do is just spread hope. And I, I love that you get this going tonight, Becky, because we can spread that hope. And it's so awesome that even though we're all locked down in our houses, pretty much the internet is letting us just talk to so I've talked to more people on the internet people that I don't normally talk to so mm -hmm. there's been a lot of blessings and sacred writing tells us that where evil abounds grace abounds even more and that's what my message is I want people to look for the grace look for the good look for the lessons in all of this yes it is hard and there are times that you know there are times where I've just wanted to fall in a puddle on the ground and just, just cry and disappear. And it's like, I'll come back next year, you know? And I've even thought of like, I'm ready to retire, you know? But, but the thing is, we got to keep going. It's not time to quit. Even though we may feel like we want to quit, especially the spiritual workers out there, the lighthouses, the light workers, shine, get up and shine. Do not quit because we're we're here for this time we're made for this time and we we've got what it what the world needs we've got what the world needs and even like in our little community right here there's no jealousy there's no competition we love each other we respect each other we love the differences about each other i i think that's what makes us all so cool and so i you know i get excited i was so excited for tonight to be a part of this and that's how what we want to put out into the world is that everybody matters and everybody's important and there's no reason to fear there's no reason to compete there's no reason to harm um this is exam time this is our final exam what have we learned and what are we going to do with what we've learned awesome message cool. yes. Yes. Cool. Yes. you know the one thing though that i i tell a lot of my students and people at psychics unite about fear is it's false expectations appearing real. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And when we take that away, we take that expectations, like I said earlier, and put them aside and, and give that person the love. You know, let's just, I mean, my example of that is, is people say stealing is against the law. But if all our families were hungry and we couldn't, mm -hmm. and the only way to feed my family today was to take a loaf of bread, when we steal yeah so it's our expectation you know it's it's what we deem that others we don't know what others are going through you know we beep our horns when we go down the highway we scream at people for not doing it we don't know that that person's trying to get to the hospital we don't know what that person's doing mm -hmm. but we have put our expectations on them we put our false hopes on them you know we expect them to do something or we wanted them to do something and they didn't then we get mm -hmm. angry and and that's what we fear is is nobody's going to listen to us nobody's going to do what we want and nobody should do what we want everybody should do what they need to do for themselves and their families so fear is a fear is a is a tough place to be in yeah. and you're right we can't be in that place you know and so when you said that 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 hit very hard and they're very you know home that that's a big thing is false expectations appearing real to people we need to remember that exactly it's an illusion. It is. Yeah. Okay. Well, Tina, I think the floor is yours. Okay. You're ready to put us all asleep. <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen. I'm hoping. No. <laughs> um, for those of us in the room, keep in mind there may not be a lot of people here, but it is being recorded. And I really do feel that the people who need to hear this, need to see this, they're going to. Yep. I mean, I, I know that for those of us who are like psychic mediums, I think you're all hearing, yes, yes, they're, they're going to see this. Yes. They're going to get out of this what they need. I'm right, glad so. I did my hair then. <laughs> okay. yeah. You know, Scott, well, I, I worked so hard on this backdrop yeah. to make it perfect. <laughs> It was Although, just a suggestion. I saw. I, I did not get rid of the dog. He's down there snoring. <laughs> I'm gonna treat myself to a Big Mac when we're done. There you go. <laughs> you know, Scotty. One thing I did want to tell you that we were, you know, uh, 
you guys were saying about, you know, how I, I came into your life and I helped you. And the one thing that Scotty always helped me with was uh, when there were times in my life and there were things that people said or did that really either upset me or I really became embarrassed. Scotty, you taught me how to just laugh it off, to just let it go and just laugh. Because you, you take everyday things that, that people do or people experience or people have problems with, and you just, you, you flip the script. You turn it around and you turn it into a moment of laughter. And every time I start to really get down on myself, I really have a, a hard time. I, I don't know whether it's spirit or it's you just near me, but I see your face and I'm like, oh God, yes. <laughs> I just start giggling. So yes, you helped me find laughter in my life when I was struggling. Oh, so, thank you. Of course. I love you guys. You guys are all part of my life. So. Yeah, that's the, that, you know, that was the toughest thing to see because, I, you know, you're such a caring woman and, and, I, and I saw that in you. I saw the love you had for others and, and I saw what, how hard you worked and how hard you tried to help others. And then to have them turn that way against you just hurt me so bad. And I understood it because it, it, they, everyone does that to me and they always have. I've lost a ton of friends since I came out as a medium, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, it's to a point where the right people are going to be your best friends forever. I'm never yes. leaving you. So sorry. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna That's go for okay. Big Mac together. No, <laughs> Next time I I'll see her, we're going for Big Mac. We'll go for Big Mac for lunch, Mexican for dinner. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> but you know well, what I mean. But it's 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 hard to see your friends getting that way and yes. give them give them a, a little piece of their belt that you know their bad belt that I talk about. You know that we all have to have that in our bad belt to come up and mm -hmm. be able to you know be able to just change things because it's not anything that I'm doing. It's what they're doing. And, and I pray for that person and, and I honor them for being who they are. And that's what we have to do through this time too, because that's a great mm -hmm. point. You know, it's not that we laugh about it, but it's, it's that we accept it and allow the people to, to mourn the way they need to mourn, mm -hmm. allow the people to express the way they need to express, you know, allow people to be who they need to be during this tough time. And, and that's, you know, and that's what we need to do as, as a whole. And then mm -hmm. to give them the love. Yeah. Uh, I think we all need to keep in mind uh, the person who seems to be hurting you the most, the person who is in your life that's just making it so hard. Keep in mind more than likely they're hurting so much more than you are. They're, they're, they're not understanding things. And they know that no matter what they do, you will still be there for them. You will still love them because that's why they're using you. They're using you to get out of them what they can't get out by themselves. So sometimes when it hurts the worst, keep in mind, they still need you. They need you more than ever. So, well, I have uh, kind of created to pull together a guided meditation for peace within. Uh, if you guys fall asleep, um, Maybe you want to mute so you don't snore, but that's okay. But <laughs> this Meeting is just something now, just in case. <laughs> this is just something for you guys to to help you find that inner peace. Right now, a lot of us are, if you're empathic, you are really struggling because of so much coming in at you. It's like <laughs> constantly coming in at you. So keep in mind that you need to find the inner peace that it, we used to have before that that we need to find again so i'm hoping this will kind of help you at least begin to find that uh well like michelle had said you know you guys need to to to, to find things again for me it's always been little joys and that's actually part of what happens at the end of this um i'm going to ask you guys to find little joys and when we get there you'll know. So when I ask you to breathe, I am going to ask you to do big breaths, big, big breaths in. Long, slow breaths out. That's how I do breathing. Sometimes I get a little longer than other people. So do what you can do, but just big breaths in, long, slow breaths out. I want you to give yourself permission. I want you to give yourself permission today 
you want to seek this peace that's within you. Tell yourself, it's okay. It's okay to do this. Now I want you to go ahead and get yourself comfortable. Either lean back, do whatever you need to do, kick off your shoes. I just ask that you do not cross your arms or legs. You can either close your eyes or keep them open, whatever works best for you. And I want you to be aware of the room around you. I want you to be aware of the people that are right there beside you, even if they're just in a little square. Now, take a nice big breath with me. Now, I need you to relax your whole body. Let's start with your toes. Go ahead and wiggle them in your, if you still have your shoes on, wiggle them in your shoes or wiggle them deep down into that carpet. Now, I need you to, let's do that with your legs. Go ahead and squeeze your leg muscles really tight and then relax. Give them another big squeeze. And now let them relax and soften. Now do the same for your bottom. Nice big squeeze and relax. Nice big squeeze and then relax your bottom. I want you to let your abdomen soften nice and soft let it relax now i want you to do this as well for your arms and legs just let them get heavy let them hang down or drop into your lap feel them getting heavier and heavier your feet feel practically glued to the floor as they feel heavier and heavier. Now I need you to unclench your jaw. We both know you're practically grinding your teeth here. Just relax it. Let it go. I want you all to find ease within your body. Let's take some big breaths. Big, big breaths in, long, slow breaths out. And with each breath out, I want you to imagine that you are pushing tension and stress out. Let it be like bubbles. Each time you breathe out, more and more gets released. Deepen and slow down each breath. Your feet are heavy. Your eyes are heavy. Your arms and hands are getting heavier. Big breaths in, long, Slow breaths out, continuing to release all that negativity and stress with each breath out. I want you to acknowledge any body sensations. Now notice your own thoughts. Let them come in very fast if they wish or very slowly if they wish. They're sort of like a mental chatter. Be amused at wherever your thoughts go and breathe. Now I'm gonna ask you to send your energy downward into the ground. There is no wrong or right way it is so important to ground yourself. You could imagine that your toes are growing longer and longer, turning into roots like that of a tree. 
Feel the soil of this Mother Earth. Imagine the many layers as your roots go deeper and deeper. Lengthen and go deeper and deeper further down into the earth. Breathe with me. Now that you are grounded, let's concentrate on finding your peace. Continue your breathing. Big, big breaths in and long, slow breaths out. I want to help you to relieve your anxiousness and to find your peace within. Now your whole body should be heavy and relaxed. You are safe and supported and you are loved. Now I need you to make space for any truth <coughs> to surface in any form it comes. Any pain or truth that surface, let them. Remember to breathe. Look at them as you continue to breathe, like a picture within your mind. Turn these pains and truths that have surfaced around and around. It's okay to have them. We all do. You are not alone. You are never really alone. Recognize what you are feeling now and accept it. This is all a part of your journey. A time, a feeling, a pain, a truth to acknowledge. Now that you see them for what they are, an obstacle, an obstacle in your path, on your journey. See it, accept it, and make room for those feelings attached with your pain and truths. Do not keep them hidden. Accept and acknowledge them and know them. Big breath, people. Big, big breaths in, long, strong breaths out. Breathe all that negativity and stress out. Time to release all that negativity that's been swirling around inside you. Just push it out. Time to let it all go as it no longer serves you. Tomorrow you will awaken and I want you to find tiny joys, tiny joys throughout the day. It can be as simple as a tiny purple flower you see on your way out that was not there the day before. And it is there for you to see a tiny joy. Or perhaps someone allows you to go first at the crossroads, even though you both got there at the same time. A tiny joy for you to have throughout the day. See and experience these tiny joys in your life. The more you see them, the more they will present themselves until your whole day is filled with joy. Now big, big breaths in, slow breaths out. Now, whenever your day begins to darken, remember all your tiny joys, little joys all day long that fill your heart, your mind, 
and spirit with love, happiness, and life filled with joy. Now slowly, ever so slowly, I want you to begin to breathe in your normal pattern. You are warm and at peace with yourself, remembering all you saw, experienced and learned about yourself, knowing tomorrow begins with joy. Joy for you, joy for your loved ones, joy for your world, joy for the whole universe. Love and light, my friends. May you sleep well tonight. You may open your eyes. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was wonderful, yes. Thank you. Good. If anything, you guys got lots of good oxygen in there. <laughs> right? I kept yawning. When I do the deep breathing, I yawn. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I hope everyone who has either tuned in or is turning in later that you find and hear and experience something tonight that changes things for you, changes things for you for the good. Mm -hmm. And if not, seek out your little joys, seek out your friends, seek out one of us. We're here. We're light workers and we're here. We're here for you. We're here for your family. We're here for the world. And you know we're just going to keep coming back to you guys get it right. Right. So. <laughs> and um, I'm going to upload the video to YouTube. Good. In the description of the video, I will put links to Tina Marie, Scotty, uh, Bernice, Michelle, myself. Um, Laura, if you have links, I'll put your links in there too. Um, you know, so that way if you do watch this later and you want to reach out to one of us, you know, you can do it that way. Um, so, you know, I'm just saying thank you all. Thank you all for, you know, everybody that's been here tonight for being in my life and making my life so much better. And, you know, thank you for anybody who's going to watch this, you know, upcoming. Um, you know, I just wish everybody nothing but love and peace. And, you know, we will get through this. You know, it's going to be a trying time, but we will get through this and we'll get through this together with love and, you know, just pure unconditional love and we'll be much better on the other side. So anybody else have any final words they want to say? Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night. Blessings to everybody. Thank you.